Stevenson was born January 11, 1897, although he claimed he was born in 1896 so that he could enlist in the First World War. He was born in Port Douglas near Winnipeg, Manitoba to William Hunter Stanger and Sarah Godfina Johnston. When he was a year old, his father died and his mother returned to Iceland with his two sisters. He was then adopted by Mr. and Mrs. Vigfa Stevenson. Stevenson grew up and enjoyed attending school, but left to join the 101st Battalion of the Winnipeg Light Infantry. Stevenson was gassed by the Germans in 1916. While recovering, he took an interest in flying. He learned to fly and transferred to the British Royal Flying Corps in August 1917. On February 9th, he was posted to the 73rd Squadron. He flew a Sopwith Camel fighter. This was a single-seater biplane. He became an ace fighter, and with 20 German planes under his belt, he was awarded the DFC. One of his most famous victories was shooting down Lothar van Richthofen, the younger brother of the infamous Red Baron, in 1918. Lothar was killed in this battle but Stevenson flew away unharmed. However, on July 28, 1918, Stevenson was called to aid a French plane under attack by five German planes. This plane was accidentally shot by the French pilot and he had to bail out of his Sopwith. Stevenson was taken captive by the Germans. Somehow, he managed to escape after only about a month in captivity. This could be the first evidence of his future talents in covert operations. Out of gratitude and maybe embarrassment, the French government awarded Stevenson the Croix de Guerre with Palm Medal. His efforts had assisted the French pilot. After the war, Stevenson returned home to Winnipeg where he attended the University of Manitoba. He invented the wire photo and then a radio facsimile method of transmitting pictures without the need of telephone or telegraph wires. He became an entrepreneur. Stevenson moved to Britain in 1921 to develop and market his invention. He earned a fortune and an entree to influential political circles in London. He met and wed Mary French Simmons in 1924. She was a rich heiress of a tobacco farmer from Tennessee. Because of his position in society, he became good friends with British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Stevenson's business trips to Germany alerted him to the imminent threat posed by Hitler. He started warning Churchill and the British government as early as 1936. Churchill took him seriously and sent him to New York City to head up the British Security Coordination Office in 1940. Stevenson became the operational and liaison arm of the United Kingdom's intelligence in the U.S. This job made Stevenson Britain's top intelligence officer in the United States. His telegraph address was Intrepid, later Stevenson's codename. From the 36th floor of Rockefeller Center in New York, under the guise of British passport control, Bill Stevenson and his agents are involved in almost every aspect of intelligence work. Coding, forgery, counter-espionage, and propaganda. How did a kid from Winnipeg end up at the heart of international intrigue? Stevenson, intrepid was the greatest mystery of all. His most conspicuous quality was an inherent capacity to disappear. Swift as summer lightning, he could make himself invisible. Like the magician's rabbit, he could melt into the mists of night or into the madding crowd of Fifth Avenue with the speed of a jet, without a sound. No. He wasn't the magician's rabbit, he was the magic. Everyone could feel it.
Stevenson founded the mysterious Camp X north of Whitby, Ontario, Canada in 1941. The camp was a top secret training ground for Allied spies. They used unusual and unheard of candidates, some with talents such as photographic memories, arsonists, and women. This was the only area of the army that women had any training in weapons and hand-to-hand -hand combat. The brilliance of it was that who would suspect a lady spy? There is a new series on CBC about a team of spies from Camp X. I'd like to show you parts of their trailer because the show does an excellent job of, of portraying what really occurred during the war. The U.S. is joining the war, but they have no foreign intelligence. We're the only spy training facility in North America. We train assassins, code breakers, saboteurs. <laughs> Bang! We specialize in unconventional warfare, which is why we need unconventional warriors like you. Our first team is in the field right now. Shoot them! Shoot them now! I won't lie to you, survival rate in the field is 50%. The information and intelligence that Stevenson spies gathered really brought to light the horrors and the ruthlessness of Hitler and his Nazi army. We are up against a ruthless, relentless enemy. Come here! And the truth is, we are losing this fight. Well, we get closer to the big bomb. And it's not a race, we want to come in second. Don't! No, sir. Please. They elected the bastard who started this. They love him. They're gonna slaughter that village for him. Hi, Lisa. If you lower your arm, we will shoot you. For success of the war, it was vital for the Allies to have good communication. Stevenson acted as the liaison between the United States and Great Britain. Stevenson used his contacts in American industry and government to improve U.S.-British relations and to push the U.S. towards war with the Axis powers. Stevenson encouraged the Roosevelt administration to establish a coordinator to oversee U.S. intelligence collection and analysis efforts. In the summer of 1941, Roosevelt picked Colonel William Wild Bill Donovan to run the Office of Strategic Service. Stevenson helped with the new organization. The Office of Strategic Service is now known as the CIA. Stevenson was given many awards over the course of his life. He was knighted by King George VI in 1945. He also received the Award of Merit from President Harry S. Truman. His good friend, General Donovan, had the honor of presenting it to him. He was the second non-American to receive this award. Sir William Samuel Stevenson, the celebrated spy master who became an inspiration for Ian Fleming's James Bond. Some feel he's the pivotal person who helped save England and defeat Nazi Germany. Stevenson had three books written about his life. If you want to know more about William Stevenson, you can get the following books. The Quiet Canadian by H. Montgomery Hyde, A Man Called Intrepid by William Stevenson, and Intrepid's Last Case by William Stevenson as well. Once World War II was over, Stevenson went back to his business affairs. He ran them mostly from Jamaica. He retired in 1968 to Bermuda. Sir William Stevenson died January 31st, 1989. Sir William Stevenson will always be remembered as Canada's greatest spy.